And today I'm going to share with you my experience in the past year uh, after having started Leaders Today. It's been a very interesting year and I'd, I'd just love to share it with you. Um, please don't feel sorry for me. Or, you know, like, oh my god, you had such a rough year. No, um, it's, it's cold. I'm not here. Um, I, I knew I was going to be talking here since the summer. And I... I, I had this, this, this interesting moment today in the morning. I struggled to decide what I was going to wear coming here. And I guess that's a struggle that I share with uh, a lot of people in the room. <laughs> and there's a, there's a reason why. So I'm wearing this t-shirt called I Lead, and it's part of an initiative that we're starting to make our, our work financially sustainable. So we thought of ways, how can we you know, start market-based solutions? You know, how can we get into some kind of business that empowers young people and at the same time speaks to our mission? So I'm like, oh yeah, we're going to start this t-shirt brand called I Lead. And you know, whoever is wearing the t-shirt will feel empowered. Oh my God, I'm a leader. And we have a reason to do that. Like, oh yeah, you know what that is? Um, and so we, we were recruiting this semester, you know, new team members to join the team here at Harvard. And one of the one of the team members who's going to be continuing with our work on this in this fashion business was like to me at this point in time, you know when I saw your t-shirt and you told me that you're starting this, I thought your t-shirt was ugly. <laughs> and that kind of got to me, it's like, oh my god, like we thought it was so cool, you know, I <laughs> it's like so beautiful and it's so attractive and everybody's gonna buy it. And because she said that, I decided, you know what, I'm not going to wear that t-shirt when I'm speaking at the, at the Igniting Innovation Summit. Because I don't want people to see me wearing something ugly. <laughs> <laughs> and I decided a couple days back, that how sad I am, what I was going to wear today. And I, there's this nice, I think it's nice, striped t-shirt, I got it out, and I was eyeing it and everything, and literally, literally had it. And when I was eyeing it, it was like, wait, why, why have you decided not to wear that t-shirt? Because it is going to really, you know, <coughs> illustrate what you're all about. You know, you'll be standing in the middle of the day, like, you know, people will be checking you out in that eyeing t-shirt. But I was like, no, I, I don't want, because she said it's ugly. And everybody else is going to think that it's ugly. And, you know, I just had this epiphany, I just like threw it away and said, you know what, I'm just going to wear that t-shirt. And there's a reason why. Because a lot of the time, you know, I, I, I'm a perfectionist. And a lot of the time I'm a perfectionist. And it's, it's very nice to get things right the first time. But that's kind of impossible. And I'm going to share with you our model. Sorry, I, I didn't have a slide. I'm kind of sad, you know. Technology <laughs> stuff. This was our model um, in the past year. So basically, we had leaders today, and what we do, as you can see in the flyers that you carry, we had leaders today, and we did leadership training. Um, I'll just, I'll just put a deviation. So we did leadership training, and you know, got internships for students. So we go to a school, and you know, train kids on leadership. Well, yeah, you can be a leader. You can go out there and make an impact. But it, it just didn't stop here. So we had those kids really believing in their capacity to lead, and what we needed to do was provide an opportunity for them to lead. And then what they did is they did projects for their communities which addressed you know, the challenges that those communities face. Beautiful model, yes? No? Very <laughs> <laughs> safe, beautiful. Um, and you know, I was really absorbed into this work. I really believed in it. I was like, we are empowering young people by providing them with this opportunity to learn about leadership and to exercise leadership in their communities. They're going to come up with this project and those projects, they're going to do really cool stuff in their communities. They're going to design this project by themselves and they will implement them and they will see, oh my God, there's stuff that I can do in my community. I can actually lead in my community. And those probably going to change, you know, the way they view their place in Zimbabwe society. Instead of viewing themselves as just like, you know, that random citizen, but seeing themselves as an empowered citizen that can like, you know, do really cool stuff in their communities and in their country. So I believed in this. And I invested a lot. And this is the part where I start, you know, you probably feel sorry for me. Because I, I remember, and I'm very, very embarrassed to say this, very embarrassed. So just like erase it out of your mind the moment I finish saying it. <laughs> the first proposal we did to, to, to like, you know, roll this out, 
we were asking for a hundred thousand dollars. You know, because we believed in it. Like, oh my God, like we can just like spread this all over the country. We'll just go training young people all over, all over the shop about leadership. And we approached this nonprofit organization. We're like, you know what? You you you're paying school fees for twenty six thousand offerings. They then like an eight million dollar organization in Zimbabwe. So you know what? Just give us a hundred thousand dollars this year, and we will train as many of the students as possible. And they refused to give us a hundred thousand. I was like, okay, cool. I didn't stop in there, you know. Came back to Harvard, and this is when I was in Zimbabwe. Came back to Harvard, you know. I I I, I know of a couple of millionaires um, in, in Southern Africa, and you know, I just emailed them. I was like, yeah, you know, I got this cool idea. You know, it will impact Zimbabwe. It will make it. And I didn't raise a single cent from it. And then we started crowdsourcing, like you know, oh yeah, you know, email friends, like you know, just give a little bit. Nothing came out of that. <laughs> so. I, I was working at the faculty club, which is um, you know right right across here, and I was now working about 20 hours a week. You know, I was, I was a sophomore doing social studies in this room, and it, that, that stuff is hectic, okay? But I, 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 I did 20 hours of work. I'd wake up at 6 a.m. in the morning, you know, to go there, make silence, and stand for seven hours. You know, I learned how to make an omelet, so you know, flip that egg. It was it was amazing. <laughs> you know, skills. And what happened is I'd, I'd worked that much, those many hours and I'd send all the money to Zimbabwe, you know? And, and I was broke a lot of the time. I remember there's a, there's a, there was a freshman, you know, from a high school, and I'd go to him, you know, once in two weeks and borrow a hundred dollars. He got so sick of it, I'm sure. But he never used to say, let's pull that. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, he gave me the first time, probably the second time, and then the seven other times I went back and he didn't give me any money. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I invested so much money. I felt so much into this, you know, got into all these competitions, you know, just got rejected the whole time. You know, applied for these grants, applied for these fellowships, and got rejected. And I felt, oh my, what? I mean, who can't see that this is amazing? <laughs> Students for granted and feeling like there's nothing they can contribute. 
Same with the students in the communities. There's so much more, there's so much overlap in their skills, there's so much overlap in their knowledge. That really, they need to tap into that in doing their projects, in doing whatever they do in the communities. And so it is with leaders today in the communities. We can't work in a disjointed way. I mean, like, it's, 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 maybe it's possible, but to have a more direct con connection with the communities and not just think like, you know, you just with these students and they'll just go there and, 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 and do a lot of stuff, which is good. And making this transition, it was full of anxiety and tension. I remember, you know, we, we, we worked on this with the team here at Harvard last semester, and it was tough. Because it's so complex. It was so complex that we didn't know what to do. We would have all these meetings, and we'll just keep talking and talking, and like, oh, where, where, where are we going? Because really, it's so complex, and it's not as simple as just saying, I will come here and I'll do stuff for you. Because the world is so complex. And I think our challenge as people who want to go out there and make an impact is to be humble in the face of the complexity in this world. I like to say I was self-righteous, thinking like this. I thought the world was so simple, you know? I thought that our program could just come and just like, you know, make, make an impact. And I'm very, very glad that organization didn't give us $100,000. Very glad. Because I can only imagine, you know, how much more limiting this model was. It was important for us to go through that learning process, to face that anxiety, to live in that tension. Because only then did we start thinking deeper about what we wanted to do. And one thing about social entrepreneurs, it's great to be fired up. It's great to have passion, but at the same time, we need to be humble and accept that this world is so complex and that offering technical solutions and, you know, thinking we can just go out there and, and, and solve the world, it may work, but probably it won't work all the time. And to think, how can I keep learning? How can I keep experimenting? Because I think one of the things that really can limit our capacity to make an impact in this world is to think we've got it all figured out. And to stop ourselves from learning. To stop ourselves from experimenting. So going back to this ugly t-shirt. I think it's gorgeous. <laughs> I think it's gorgeous because it's the first step to something that is maybe going to be way bigger than we thought it would. And a lot of the time, you know, you're here because you believe you can do something. And a lot of the time, people are paralyzed because they think, oh my God, my model is so ugly. Like, there's nothing I can do with the ideas that I have in my mind. But really, the first step is in trying. I don't regret having this model and assuming that I can save the world with the little training program uh, that went over three days. I don't regret it. Because it was, it was a critical first step. It formed part of a critical learning process. So my challenge to you is, this world is complex. Let's be, let's be humble in, the, in face of that complexity. And let's try as much as possible to learn, to keep experimenting, to know that at some point, the things that other people see as ugly, the things that we see as ugly, will be transformed to very, very gorgeous things. And that's the change.